This tutorial will show you how to add room names and numbers to floor plans in Revit. We typically use room names and numbers in Revit, even in small projects, to help show contractors where different things like flooring, paint colors, windows, doors, and even hardware go throughout the architectural project. I've only got two rooms right now, so I'm going to add a few extra walls just to show you the variety of things that you can do. I'm going to go to Wall, and I'm going to make sure to select Finish Face, and select this corner, and make sure that the wall is aligning. We always want to make sure that our walls are joining up, because if they don't, when we try to place something, we're going to get an error. Okay, so now I have several spaces, and I'm going to go to the Architecture tab, and then if we go over here, we have the Room and Area section, and we can have things like Rooms, Room Separator, which works in places like a living room and a dining room that might be an open room, but you might have different finishes or different things you need to designate. We can also add tags to the room later if we've added room separators, but they don't have tags. And we can even get the area of certain spaces. But today we're just going to add rooms. We click on this tool and then we hover over the space where we want to add a room name and number. And you notice that Revit recognizes where those walls are. And that's why it's important to make sure that all of our walls are actually complete because at Revit will then give us an error if they're not. So you notice Revit doesn't know what the names of all of these rooms are. They just name them room, and they give them numbers consecutively based on where we first started. If we happen to delete one of those, Revit's going to continue with the next number. They're not going to start over again. So we hit Escape twice to get out of that command, and then we can click on the actual tag, and you notice in the properties we now have something that opens up and it tells us that we can have a leader line, the orientation of the tag, and there's even a little move symbol that allows us to move it out of the room. If say the room is too crowded, we might have furniture or dimensions that make it harder to see where there's room tags go. I'm going to click on this room tag and I'm going to drag it out of the space. And you notice that it gives a question mark and then an error pops up that says it's outside of its room. And that's okay. Don't move it back to the room, but hit OK, and then go to the properties and add that leader line. What that does is that it has a leader line that shows us that this tag goes to that room, but then it's not in the room and it frees up space for, again, furniture or dimensions or other things that we might need. So if we want to change the name of the room, we click on the text and we can call it the appropriate label based on what it is. We can also change numbers, because typically when we look at numbering things, especially as we move into commercial or institutional projects, we number things based on the floor level. So the first floor would have 100, 101, 102, 103, the second floor 200, and so on. Since this is a single story building right now, I'm just going to stick with 1, 2, 3, 4, and of course even Multiple story buildings, as long as they're small and don't have a lot of rooms, can stick with just 1 through 10, something like that. It depends on how complicated you want to get with your numbering. So now that we have these room numbers and their names, we want to make sure to save. And then we can actually add a schedule. If you go over to our project browser on the right and you see schedules does not have a plus next to it, so no schedules have been created. So we can right click. We can hit New Schedule, and we can select the kind of schedule that we're interested in. This is where we can do things, like we can have a finished schedule, we can have a door schedule, a window schedule, something like that that actually uses the rooms that we've created in order to help us give information to a contractor. So I can do just a room schedule, and when I click some of these predetermined schedules, they're going to have different things that are a part of it. I can also go back up and see if I can find a finished schedule. 
And so it doesn't have a finished schedule, but I can use my room schedule for that. And they're all different types of schedules, a lot of which you will not use, like electrical equipment, things like that. Those are going to be more for engineers. So I'm going to stick with the room schedule and hit OK. And then here, it gives me different options. So I can say what my ceiling finish is. So if I like that, I can click it and add it to my schedule. I can add my base finish, like a wall base, like it could be a wood or a vinyl. I can add my floor finish. I can put the room name in here. I can put the room number. There are different options based on, again, the type of schedule that I've selected. And similar to what we saw with the materials, I can move things up or down. So number probably would be first on my finished schedule, and then room name would be next. And we tend to work from the ground up, so ceiling finish would probably be last. After wall finish, base, and floor. So I hit OK, and now Revit creates a schedule. And here we can see the four rooms that I created. Some don't have room names yet, but some do. And I have not added a base, floor, wall, or ceiling finish yet, so that information is not there. So all of these things help build the building information model that you use when you work with contractors and when you share information with subcontractors and contractors.